In this video I'll show you how to set up a project management base in Airtable on an example of a construction company with multiple projects, with client and vendor CRM, bid management, integrated client proposals and the robust Gantt scheduling features. Let's get started! Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated and today I'll show you an example of the Airtable base to use for project management by a construction company. But this base could be also well used for other businesses that have a need to manage multiple projects at the same time. So for example here, every unit is a separate construction project that needs to be monitored separately and tracked. So let's go to the start of this base and I'll gradually explain all the tables and how are we using them. So the first table over here are properties and for each of the properties we're having some of the information that might be useful in terms of the properties of this um, property in terms of floor size, information, location and so on. We are also having what units belong to that particular property. So these are all the units here we are having a lookup of the clients that own those specific units. Now when we move over to units over here which can also represent a project for us you will see that the name of each unit is basically created by concatenating the, the suite, concatenating the floor and the, the, the name of the property. So that's fairly simple. Then we add some additional information like the area and who is the owner as well as lookup of the information from that specific owner. So those units could be representing specific projects. So each of those units later will represent a specific project on our schedule. So now when we move over to the client, we will see that we have all the necessary details for the clients, like their address, phone numbers and so on. But we also have the client owner. So here you can mark who is a specific contact person from our team being responsible for that client. Now let's move over to the vendor base. Inside of the vendor, similarly, we have the owner of the vendor who is the person that is contacting that vendor who is their, let's say, account executive who is the person in charge. Now we also have uh, additional properties like what are the type of services that they provide. So here you can see that there are specific type of jobs that they are specializing. So you, for example, have a painting company, you have a company that does electric installation, landscaping and so on. They can have multiple specialities and so on. So this is just for our way of um, tracking which company does what. And then we also have information that are necessary to identify, let's say, the key contact person at that company. We also have website and the typical information you would expect to see in CRM. By the way, you can download this base from the description uh, below so you will have all those fields so that you can start with it and you can modify it. The next step we also are putting here some notes that would be interesting for us to know what is happening with that specific vendor, what is the latest status and so on. Okay now we move over to another interesting part which will be bits. On the bid table, we are collecting bids from the vendors for a specific type of work for each of those projects separately. So you can see that, for example, this is one of the units and here we are collecting bids, how much they would charge us so that we can create a quote for our client. So we collect quotes from all those vendors and here you can, for example, add, let's say, another vendor that I have selected over here. So for a stone company, we are asking them about countertops and at the moment we have only requested the bid from them. So here you can mark it as requested. So you haven't received any information from, from them. Once they receive submit information for you, then you can mark it as received or uh, as received or you can also mark it as selected if you would like to um, present it to the client. To make this part a little bit easier, we also have a submission form. So the submission form here is set up this way that um, a unit can be selected, the vendor can be selected from the list, the bid submitted date can be inputted here, type of work, bid details, days to complete and actual quote in numbers and so on. So this is, this is how the um, submission form looks like. But I have also added a little bit more convenient way how to send it to the vendor. So as you have noticed here, I have set this one as um, additional vendor for which I have requested a quote and I have added here this submission pre-field submission form URL. Once you click on it, 
it will open the submission form that is specific to the given vendor so you can see that his name is actually the vendor name is actually pre-filled over here through the ID and the unit is also pre-filled over here and then the today date is pre-filled as well so it's a little bit easier to link it to that specific type of work so it can be this so once that is submitted it arrives back into our into our base and you will see that we have all the details over here so we can delete the old one and as you if you would like to uh, adjust the formula you can see over here how that formula is constructed we're using the prefill modifier and we're adding the record id and we are also adding the hide for vendor equals true as well as prefill the bit submitted date with the today's date as you will notice we are also using the record ids record ids are hidden fields that are being looked up over here from the unit and from the vendors table and so on so these are just the ids of those vendors visible here all right so now let's move on to the next stage once we receive the bids we would like to create a proposal so now we are in the proposal table and you can see that here i have selected the client i have selected which unit it refers to and now i have already added markup and the status is to do here there is a couple of status like in progress okay so we start now working on this quotes we know that we have gotten all the bits for that quote and so on so what we will do we will copy the name and come back to the bits so right now we will see that we have multiple bits for example for the flooring so let's say we will select the ones that we want to show to the client so someone from our team has reviewed them and decided to select those bits so if we know that those bits are selected we will add them in a proposal to client so once you link this to the proposal over here what will happen is that the sum of bits will show up over here together with our markup and this will be visible uh, here and so you'll get the automatically and you'll get the total and apart from that here on the side in the extensions we're using one more element over here which is Airtable page builder so within this page builder I have already set up all the necessary fields so like you can edit how this looks like and so on so I have created all the necessary fields to pull up the individual bits so you will see that like what is the quote for each part of the work what are the bit details coming from the bits over there what is another quote and so on so basically all the quotes that are on the list here when i click that would be the another quote over there so you will see that here all the bits will show up so for example for the demolition work and um, abc inc we are missing some of the information so for example we could either remove it and put a different quote so we will just go back over there you will see that demolition is gone the price has adjusted automatically or we can put it back over here so i'll just copy paste it from the field below and i will add some description to that work over there so you will see that the pdf has this can be exported as a pdf so this document has automatically gotten updated this ended up at the end of the document okay so this is something that is being sent out you can see that we decided to show here the price with our markup so this can actually be adjusted you can change the way you're quoting you'd have also a different number here the way you would do it you would go to the to the uh, edit over here and on each of those elements you can adjust what what is underneath so you would say that for example this element here this field this is not the total field you could click x and you would be able to change it to another field or you would be also able to add another text field over here and then this could be some static text descriptions or you could take one of the values over here and basically drop them over here or if you would like to show the just the pure sum of bits you could have it underneath and you could also have let's say percentage percentage markup so you could place it somewhere there and you would be able to add the text fields on top of them say the total sum of bits is this this is our markup just to be transparent with the clients and so on and then you are able to print it out and send it out to the clients okay so that's everything here
All right, and now let's assume that, for example, this was already sent out to the client. This was already approved, so that's great. We know this project can start. And then after a little bit back and forth, we have decided like, okay, so the date that we're gonna start this project, it's gonna be that date. Once we have the project starting date, we are able to start the project. And for that, we will use the schedule table. And inside of the schedule table, you can see that we already have an existing project over here. So this is the project that is ongoing. This is everything linked to the uh, unit number 100. And each of those project elements has a specific status. At the same time, we're also having a timeline view. And inside of the timeline view, you will see that the color of the tiles is based on the status. So if it's green, it's done. Yellow in progress, uh, blue materials are ordered. So you can see that here, what is the status of each element based on the color. So this way you could have multiple uh, projects stuck, but what might be more interesting is looking at the Gantt chart. So here on the Gantt chart, you would see that all of those projects are being, all of those elements of the project are being stacked, stuck on top of each other with the critical path uh, behind them. So you can see that this is, the cleaners are not linked to the deadline. So let's link this final critical, critical path. And okay, so everything is linked over there. The colors are representing the same information. Let's take a look what is happening if we start the project. So once we start the project, there is an automation here that will get triggered. So once we go to the automations, here we have automation that runs when the status is start project and when the starting date is not empty. So it's a very simple trigger. And what it does next, it runs a script. The script is a little bit more complex. What the script does, it's basically getting the details of all the tables that you are using. It is linking to all the records. So it's uh, retrieving all the records from all the tables that are involved. And based on that, creating the Gantt chart. Oh, there's one more element that I forgot to mention. There is a typical project flow here we are setting a typical project flow that we would expect. So all of those elements are necessary for our project. If the bits do not contain any one of those, then those would be added anyway. If bits contain those project elements, but don't have, for example, a default number of days, the default will be used from, from here. So coming back over here, we basically go through all the bits within the proposal that were um, approved and we list all the activities from the bits. So here we are creating a hash table with all those activities, with the duration, with the vendor and the ID of the bit and so on. We are setting the starting date based on what we have selected. And we are also using this kind of preceding activity as a placeholder so that we can build a critical path. And the next step, what we do, we start going through each of the records inside of the workflow. Workflow, as you will see over here, workflow, this is coming from default workflow, which is our typical project flow. So we start going through each of the activity that we had on our typical project flow. And what we do in this section is basically on our default project flow, when we have a corresponding bit, then we use the details from the bit. If we don't have the corresponding bit, we just use the default values from our mandatory project flow. And then we continue going through all of them and we create those entries on our scheduling table. Then we continue over here. And finally, once we are left with any bits that are not part of the standard project flow, we would add them at the end. So we'd also create those additional scheduled tasks and so on. And at the end, we're just adding the deadline. So that is, that is everything here. We have just some helper functions about adding the, the days and about adding work days. Let's go back to our Gantt chart. Okay, so this is what would uh, result from running the script. And the way we would start the script would be here, we would change this from approved or any other status to start project. So once we start project, the automation starts running in the background and the script starts generating all the elements that were inside of, um, inside of that proposal. And as you will see, these are all the elements that are following our standard, standard typical project flow. And here at the moment we have 
additional element which is not part of that flow. So for example, we don't have landscaping over here. So maybe so maybe from the standard project flow, it is not clear when, where to place it. But in this case, you would say like, fine, this needs to be behind the appliances. So you would go over here and you would click on the appliances, delete the painters as the critical path, and then link the, that landscaping to painters. And now you will see the chart is invalid, has one invalid dependency because in a Gantt chart, everything needs to start in order. So in this means that you have to move this a little bit more forward. And as you will see what is happening right now, the project gets pushed forward. And that also means that other elements here get pushed forward. And that means that also the deadline is being met over here. So this is how you arrange the element on the Gantt chart. If for whatever reasons, for example, this landscaping would need to take more days, you will see that everything on the critical path moves forward. All right, so that's how it works. Um, you can adjust this sort of, this is a guide, guidance for the script in case the bits would not be having the amount of days to complete. But if there are days to complete, then this usually, this overrules the number of days that is being used in the, in the script. And that, that's kind of, that determines how the Gantt chart is created. Also now when we go back to the timeline, you can see that on the timeline it's easy to see multiple projects at the same time. So for example, you can see multiple projects and you could also color this, for example, not by what is the status, but you could color this, for example, based on the team that is working on it. So you could see visually when there's some sort of overlap between the teams. All right, you'll find the link to this base together with the script in the description below. And that's it. That's everything. Let me know if that was useful for you and how you could see you could use it for other project management tasks. All right. Good luck automating your business. Mm -hmm.